The opening of hostilities. So, we've got the small German force over here, in case Russia mobilises quickly, and we've got the small German force down here to contend with the French army, which the Germans anticipated correctly would attack over the Franco-German border here. In the meantime, we've got the main German army poised to strike, not through Holland and Belgium, as anticipated by von Schlieffen, but due to von Moltke's tinkering, the German army was now only going to advance through Belgium. So what happened in 1914? Well, it's important to point out that von Moltke decided that this small force to contend with the Russians was just too risky. So he decided to make the large force even smaller and cut some of it away. And he sent it across <clears throat> over to here in case the Russians decided to attack or managed to attack, mobilise quickly. Now when the fighting began, the French pushed into Germany. The, the small German force were fighting uh, admirably, but they were no contention for the French force, and they were pushed backwards, just as planned by Schlieffen. The German army stormed through into Belgium, but this is where things started to go wrong. The Germans had hoped that the Belgians would just let the German army pass through, or if they did fight back, they wouldn't be very good at fighting. But the Belgians put up a stern resistance against the Germans, and this, crucially, slowed them down. But not only that, because the Germans decided to invade Belgium, this had a disastrous consequence. That disastrous consequence for the Germans was that the, the invasion of Belgium brought Great Britain into the war. Uh, on, on a swell of public opinion who thought that Belgium were being picked on by the bullies Germany. But of course we know that there were other reasons why Britain might want to fight and stand up to the Germans. So the British came across the channel and contested with the, the, the fight with the Germans. They were of course, and you can see, that one of the smaller armies in Europe, concentrating more on the navy. But nevertheless, it was another factor that slowed the Germans down in Belgium. So the British advanced over the Channel, into France, and then through into Belgium to join the fight against the Germans. But the Germans were just too strong for the Belgians and the British, and pushed them back. They had to retreat back towards Paris as the Germans advanced, and took Belgium, and then into France. But it was this, this fight of the Belgians and British, which was absolutely vital in understanding why the Schlieffen plan failed, because it slowed the Germans down. They didn't expect this level of resistance. And this meant that France, over here, could realise the danger, realise that Paris was under threat. And instead of continuing the advance into Germany, they left a small token force to fight the small German force and sent the majority of their troops back in this direction. The Germans had managed to push right up to the outskirts of Paris by the time that the French had reorganised, ready to face the Germans. And then the French, British and the small amount of Belgian troops that were left managed to push the Germans back again. And when they'd got to that point, their furthest advance, when they got to this point, having pushed the Germans back away from Paris, that's where the trenches started to be built. And that's for the next chapter.